I have a feeling that this is probably going to be my most controversial Bad Seasons video to date. But this is a season that was so bad, I just had to make a video on this. So here it is folks, Bad Seasons, Michael Waltrip, 2001. So let's get into it. Prior to 2001, Michael Waltrip was just another journeyman driver. His most monumental highlight was in 1996 when he scored an upset victory in the All-Star Race for the Wood Brothers. Other than that one victory, there was really nothing else as he would go 462 starts without a win. All of a sudden, his good friend Dale Earnhardt Sr. decided to lend a helping hand as he would hire Michael Waltrip to drive for his third team for DEI in 2001. There were a ton of people questioning this move. When Dale put Michael in an Napa car, and everybody said, have you lost your mind? He's driven 400 some races and had never won a race. Why do you think, why did you pick him? Dale always knew in his heart that Michael could drive. And he always felt like he needed, just needed an opportunity. And to some degree, Dale Sr. was right because the unthinkable would happen in the 2001 Daytona 500, both good and bad. This is when we're gonna find out. We're coming around for the white flag. And I thought, if this motor doesn't blow up and the tires don't blow out, I'm gonna go down there and make two lefts and I'm gonna come back and win the Daytona 500. Make that back straight away wide, buddy. Get all over the place. Come on, man. Come on now. Watch it, mirror. Watch it. He's gonna make a run inside. I kept trying to tell Dale Jr. to stay on Michael. And Sterling started coming. 36 started coming. And all of a sudden, there was a lot of activity around Dale for third place. That a boy. Three wide behind them. You got him, Mikey. You got him, man. You got him. Come on, man. Come on. Get him in the fold. Get him in the fold. The three cars out. Oh! Big trouble. Big wreck behind them. Beat him back. Come on. To the flag. Come on, Mikey. You got it, man. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Michael Walter. Waltrip's season started off in the best way possible, scoring his first career win in the Daytona 500. At first, there was tremendous celebration, but what soon followed would be tragedy. This is undoubtedly one of the toughest announcements that I've ever personally had to make. Uh, but after the accident and turn four at the end of the Daytona 500, uh, we've lost Dale Earnhardt. His best friend slash car owner, Dale Earnhardt Sr., would pass away in the 2001 Daytona 500. This was a tough loss for all of NASCAR, especially his own team, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. However, the team still pushed through. Steve Park was inside the top 10 in points prior to his injury, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. would go on to win three races while finishing eighth in the standings. But Michael Waltrip and his team fell outside of the top 10 after the first five races. What soon followed was a season filled with three crew chief changes, constant mid-20 runs, constant bad luck, and constant wrecks. In an Earnhardt car, Michael Waltrip won the Daytona 500. He too is here today to carry on. Lost control in yesterday morning's practice session, demolishing his primary car rolled out the backup car, and though he brushed the wall in turn four on his qualifying pass, he's in the show. The Tennessee Walsh right there in the infield. Ooh. Looks like he might have come whoa. down on Michael. Michael whoa, got in his whoa, left rear just a little bit, but Jerry come down on Michael. Well, that's why our drivers hate in-car cameras. <laughs> Does Michael Walter have a problem, Steve? Mike, I just walked into the pits and asked some of the crew members. They think he's got a broken shock, and that would explain why that car will not handle. And that could have happened when he made contact with Nadeau early on. He bent that right front fender up pretty good, and he could have done some damage to his chassis. And trouble for Michael Waltrip. That's not the way you want to see your hood. Steve? Mike, as I reported earlier, they thought they had a broken shock. They just had the hood up. Then they thought they had a flat tire. We'll check with crew chief Scott Eggleston to find out exactly what the problem is for Michael Waltrip. Darrell, let's see what happened here. Ooh. Ooh, he may have gotten a little help from that uh, McDonald's car. Nowhere for Kirk Bush in the 97 car, right in front of Mike Skinner in the 31 car. I mean, he dodged two bullets there. From Michael Walter and the Napa cam. Oh, 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 it gets loose on him. It gets loose on him. I'm not sure if that 96 car didn't probably get into the back of him. 
trouble. Had trouble. Michael Waltrip. That started off a of turn two. Michael got into Spencer. Spencer drove it down in under him going into turn three. Turned him around. Lap 94, it's our third caution of the day. Second one involving Jimmy Spencer. He's had a lot of success in the modifieds here. Let's watch the Napa on board. This happens way over here coming off turn two. Michael got into Jimmy a little bit, and then Jimmy just drove it down in under him and said, thank you very much. Watch Michael's car, I think it is. Right up here in the front of the top of the screen. Gets a little loose, he corrects, and boom. Bam. Hits that outside retaining wall. And then the 32 goes around reacting to what he saw. It was almost like he overcorrected. He there. just, yeah, he, he, he didn't know where Michael was going to go. He didn't know if he's going to come off the wall or stay there. Six or seven. Trouble, Probably. trouble, big trouble. Down the front, cars going everywhere. Well, and and Michael, about 10, they're still wrecking the five car. And here comes the leader. Caution out, spotters backing everybody down. Kenny Wallace could not get his lap back, despite Rusty jumping on the brakes. And the accident scene is pretty clear when they get there. Michael. A lot of damage to the rear of that car. Kenny and Bill Elliott get together and turn Michael around. Dale Jr. does a good job avoiding it. Bobby Hamilton. Bobby Hamilton got some damage. Oh, the car's sideways. All, all the cars are loose down in the corner. The track is wet. It's Gordon, Gordon, Michael Walter, Kevin 29 Harvey. car. All these cars are wrecking because I believe it might be raining down there. And the rain is Look, coming it's even raining. harder. Oh, for Pete's sake. What a way to start this event. For some drivers, what a way to end it. No other cars around. And he's backed in the fence, and they start this happy hour session with the tanks full of fuel. It's a look at the end of it. And again, gasoline is full of, the gas tank is full of fuel, so when it hits the wall and squeezes the gas tank together, the fuel has to go someplace, so it comes out inside the car, and a little spark, and you have a fire. This is what it looked like inside Michael Waltrip's car. <laughs> It's loose all the way around, so uh, whatever you've done, you... Evacuation. But Mike, he is out of his car and okay, which is good news. Fourth row, Michael Waltrip's lined up there. He'll be dropping to the back of the field. He crashed that car. They qualified. In happy hour, he's in a backup. Let's have a look at this. Oh, did his teammate get him? His teammate got him. Ouch. I do believe that his teammate... Junior got in the back of the 15 car. <laughs> oh. Michael Waltrip came down pit road with some damage to the right front fender on his car. Let's find out how. I, I think what happened was that we're going to show you. I think he hit the wall. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you're sharp. Anyway, I, over here, you see the 14 car in the back. I think he had a tire going about the same time and somebody got into the back of him. Still a very nice run for Michael Walter thus far. He started 27th. He is running 16th right now. And remember, oh, this is he just spun out, Marty. Just as you talked about him, he spun out and crashed in turn two. Well, as he was doing that, Slugger Labby, his crew chief, was talking to him on the radio. This was just the second race with Slugger as a crew chief. And uh, the crew did not know it. Slugger was talking to him on the radio as he was spinning out. And the crew did not know until just now that Michael Waltrip was into the wall. But they had a great run going, guys. And Michael Waltrip also into the wall behind him. Some heavy, heavy damage to Michael's left side. Now, what might have happened to Michael Waltrip, I'm not sure. But we know he's going to spin around and hit the wall hard with the left side. Might have seen the first spin and got off the gas and got run into it from behind. That would be a good good possibility. Michael Walter was waving his hand inside the car when Ricky Rudd ducked to his outside. I thought maybe he was saying, come on, hook up with me, but he's losing spots. He's on the bottom of the racetrack. It looks like Michael Walter has a problem. Coming to pit road. You ain't missing. 
Might be a red limiter going bad, is what he said. Tough break for Michael. He's fallen back into the field. But Michael Waltrip had the right front go down on his car. That's why we're back under the yellow flag. But right fronts certainly are the headline of the day here in Phoenix. We'll take a break while we're under caution. And just we got a car in trouble. It's Michael Waltrip. Right front. Well, at Phoenix, it happened on lap 30, and guess what lap we just completed? Yes, sir, 30. And that shows all the signs. So is 2001 stature this? One win, three top fives, three top tens, an average finish of 25.8, and would finish 24th in the standings. All anyone wanted to talk about was Waltrip's 500 win from this season. But now the other thing people are going to start talking about is how horrible this was. And a huge shout out to NASCAR Nixon for giving me this suggestion. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.